Welcome to Aiken This Week. I'm Emory Langston. Well, today you can see that we're on stage at the AECOM Center for Performing Arts, and I'm being joined by Justin Whelan, hey. who is the founder and president of Southern City. And uh, Justin, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I think that yeah. we're in a very appropriate location yeah. to have a discussion about uh, Southern City yeah. and the Southern City Film Festival Definitely. that's going to take place November 4th, 5th, and 6th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know that this has been a passion of yours for a number of years. Yeah. Um, but before we, we talk about this very unique mm -hmm. um, organization you have in this unique event, I want you to talk a minute about yourself um, oh, and, and the background and the experience that you have and what's kind of helped fuel the passion yeah. for wanting to do this. So tell us about yourself and how you got into the entertainment business. Well, it happened in 2006, really. I was living in uh, Blythewood, South Carolina, which is right outside of Columbia, and I was trying to play golf. I was trying to be a golf pro because that's, I was good and aching, so I thought I could be good elsewhere. Sure. But, uh, you know, those guys all around the state are so good, let alone the, the country. So anyway, it just wasn't happening for me, and I was thinking I should do something different, but I had never done anything in the movie business, sure. I mean, I had never done any acting at all, so that was never, it never even popped into my head that that's something that I wanted to do or was even an option to me. So anyway, I was thinking maybe I'll come home and try college. I don't know. I didn't know what, what to do. Um, I was 18, so, um, so anyway, I was playing golf and just happened to basically stumble on a movie set pretty much. Um, it was it was a Kevin Bacon movie and James Wan was directing it who at the time um, wasn't super famous but now he is. I mean he's done the Saw movies and Insidious and The Conjuring and all these scary movies. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. kind of his thing but then he did Fast and the Furious 7 which um, was a big monster hit. But mm -hmm. Anyway so I went to this movie set and um, just had an amazing time. Uh, I was basically just a guest. I didn't really do much. Um, but, you know, I got to eat lunch with Kevin Bacon and James Goodman and Aisha Tyler and all these people all, I had always seen on camera. And I just became hooked. I mean, it was just neat to see all the tractor trailers and all the lights and the cameras and the actors and just to get to watch them do their thing. It was just fascinating to me. So I thought, well, let me try that, you know. Um, my parents were always good about you know, telling me I can be whatever I wanted to be, and I believed them, so I just thought, well, that's what I want to do, so that's what I'm going to do. Yes. And I mean, it was naive at the time, it just happened to work out well for me. So, <laughs> you know, over the course of the last seven or eight years, I tried acting um, full time, and it, it was going well. I mean, a lot of projects, a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, but then I kind of wanted to try directing because I think every actor at some point wants to to switch. Um, so I got into that a little bit and I found out, um, you know, just like the, the movie thing, I thought, well, okay, I really like that. So, um, and I was decent at it, so that's what I did. Um, and so I've kind of been just, I haven't really um, done much acting the last year, so I've kind of been directing and mm -hmm. writing and producing, which is a lot of fun too. So, I mean, it's just been it's just been fun. It's I mean, kind of a, a happenstance type of situation yeah, yeah. that really just exploded into something yeah, pretty and you great just, for you. I mean, you never know what your passion is until you just something ignites it. Sure. Um, so obviously that's yes. Yeah, that's that leads kind of into the, everything else. That's yeah. right. <laughs> So you write, mm -hmm. you act, you produce, and you direct. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we have this multifaceted yeah. um, opportunity going yeah. on with mm -hmm. you. Um, but I know that you've won several Emory, Emmys. Yeah. So <laughs> I want... We should yeah, change it to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were those Emmys for? Yeah. And what was that like? Especially, you know, you, you kind of stumbled into your passion. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to take it yeah. to that level, right. talk about that. Yeah, that I mean, that was something that I just never even thought about. I mean, even more so than the movies, just because you don't think about, I mean, the Emmy is the highest honor you can get yes. in television. So, I mean, it, it was just, 
never in my brain, not even in the back of my brain. It was just never there. Um, but I, um, so I was nominated for four in 2014. Um, I was working at Fox at the time and um, made some commercials and PSAs and stuff that got nominated. And so that's funny because I, um, I was nominated for four in, in that one year. And all my friends, they kept telling me, well, you're going to win at least one. You're going to get one. I mean, one out of four. I sure. like your odds. And, and so the few months leading up to the, actually, no, I think we found out in, no, I found out in May. So about a month leading up to the Emmy Awards, um, you know, I just, I got it. Everyone, they were being supportive sure. and they were being nice sure. and they were, they were being nice, but everyone just kept saying, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. And I started believing it. Sure. So my wife and I, we went to the Emmys and, you know, it was tuxedos and red carpets and um, just like you see on TV and we're sitting there and, you know, the first one comes around and I don't win and I said, okay, well, 33% chance and that's not how percentages works, but I said, okay, well, now I'm down to a 33% chance and didn't win that one. I was like, okay, 50-50, didn't get that one. All right, here we go. <laughs> and they called out, the, you know, they really do open the envelope mm -hmm. and, and the Emmy goes too and... I didn't win and I was crushed because I got it in my mind. Sure. Like I was just picturing coming home with one in the car. That's and, right, yeah. Um, so I did not win and in fact that was um, a bad night for me because like I said um, the whole time. So anyway they called out that last award and I just told my wife, I said let's just go. I didn't even want to, you know they had all these after parties and, and I said let's go. So, so we left and I mean I regret that now. Right. Um, but I was just so down. Um, so anyway, we left the next day, and um, I was gave myself a few days to be down. Just, um, but then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to make it my mission for the next year to produce, make the best stuff I can make, and get back there. I mean, that was I, it was a laser-like focus. Mm -hmm. Every decision, every mm -hmm. professional decision I made was basically. Will this be good enough to get nominated? You know, will this give me a chance? And so anyway, I joined up with, um, I got hired, uh, poached, I say, uh, to go to Trainer Gray, um, which is a production company in Evans, and they do great work. And you don't hear about them much because they don't do a ton locally. Um, so it's not like everyone uses them. They do a lot of national sure. um, and big projects. So I got with them and we just, you know, I told him, even in the interview process, I said, this is my goal. I mean, which is a good goal to have. I mean, it, yeah. it only means you're going to try to make the best stuff you right. can make. So, right. anyway, I told him, this is my goal. Can we do it together? And they, of course, heck, heck yeah. I mean, who's going to say no to that? So we made stuff the next eight months, and then it came time to submit. So we submitted stuff and um, came around. The nominations came out in May, and we got um, four or... I was, nom I was on six nominations, four with Trainer Gray, and then two were with Southern City. So anyway, we were super pumped. This would, this would be their first time, and right. it would be my second time, which I knew what to expect now. Right. So we went back. Um, we, we all went. I mean, it was 10 people at the table, which was more fun um, because I knew that even if we didn't win, I would be okay this year. Because... Right. Um, Everyone said the same stuff again. Well, six, you're definitely going to yeah. get one. I said, no, be quiet. Don't <laughs> say that. So um, they called out the first four of the night, and we didn't win. I, was, I just felt that sick feeling. Wow. I said, oh, here it goes again. I had like 10 nominations, no wins. I thought Susan Lucci's coming into play. <laughs> and so anyway, we got to the last two, and um, a friend of mine actually went out on stage um, to present the award, and I thought, well, that's cool. I mean, wouldn't it be neat? And anyway, they did the nominees and then they opened the envelope and, you know, you're sitting there and they said, you know, and the Emmy Award goes to and Trainer Gray and they called out our names. And so um, it was just like a blur. We went on stage. Right. We we said our thank yous, just like you see on TV. And then they whisked us backstage to sign for the awards. You know, we all won because the Emmys are, are kind of neat. They they only go to individuals. They never go to bosses or production companies. Right. Or they only are awarded to individuals. So we all got one. Um, 
Anyway, took us backstage. We took lots of pictures. And then right when we walked through the doors to go sit back down, they called our names again. Oh, my gosh. So we just went up there again, did it all over again. And then, um, you know, and then we were all, I mean, everyone had two. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just awesome. Then we went to the after parties, and um, it was just awesome. Next day, we went to a Braves game, and we were all multiple Emmy Award winners the next yes, day. Yes, so. indeed, indeed. Yeah, and the projects were good. I mean, the two that actually won were for, one was a texting and driving campaign, and then one was a drinking and driving campaign. Oh, very good. So, and one went really viral. I mean, just like hundreds of millions of views, mm -hmm. millions of shares on Facebook, millions of views on YouTube. And so that was cool because for a few days there, while, while it was going viral, I mean, you could watch the view count, hit refresh, it'd be up another few thousand, hit refresh, another few thousand. I mean, just wow. in real time, I mean, just like that, refresh, refresh. Re and it was just, you know, everyone there is just watching this thing. We had pizza party going on. I mean, it was fun, so. What an exciting time. And yeah. to know that your work is having that kind of an impact. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had comments. We read the comments, you know. It, I mean, there were thousands and thousands of comments, but you know, they get sorted by yeah. most popular. So, so we'd read them and people would share their stories of, I shared this with my daughter, I shared this mm -hmm. with my right. family, and I'm gonna put my phone away. So, I mean, we were really excited to think that maybe if, if even one person right. out of the millions sure. were, was going to, get into, going to get into an accident but didn't, um, I mean, that's awesome. That's the best possible scenario, so. What an exciting time yeah, to, to go the first time, yeah. <laughs> then come go the second yeah. time and come home with two. Yeah. And just, just an amazing thing. Yeah. And your passion really does show in the work that you do. Yeah. And I know that you've had, um, you got bit by the bug, kind yeah. of fell into yeah. it. You've had this passion going. Mm -hmm. um, and I know the southern city component mm -hmm. of it has been something that, that you've been working on for a number yeah. of years. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about that specifically yeah. and, and, and why you started yeah. Southern City. Yeah, so, I mean, you had a pretty big part in it, um, which I'll, I'll mention, but basically I just started thinking, okay, my passion, okay, so I play in a lot of these golf tournaments and they're all for charity. I mean, everyone, I just got back from one that mm -hmm. sports the Boys and Girls Club of Orlando and they, with the money we raised, they bought a big bus for them so they can take them to places. And so all these charity events um, just do amazing things. I mean, they raise a, lot, a ton of money, a lot of money. And so I started thinking, well, I'm not any big celebrity. I'm not famous. But I said, let me at least use what little influence I have, what little connections I have to try to do some good in my community. Mm -hmm. um, so I started thinking about you know, the kids growing up, and, and part of my story was that, you know, I never knew that filmmaking or acting or the movie stuff was something I wanted to do mm -hmm. because it was, there wasn't anything to give me the exposure. Mm -hmm. And so I just started thinking, I started feeling bad for the kids who are not even going to know that's an option. I mean, that's our whole thing is we don't expect everybody to fall in love with filmmaking and go on to win an Oscar and but um, in the same way that the theater, I mean, sure. Youth Wing, they don't have a 100% rate of everyone going to, to acting, but um, they're giving these kids exposure, they're letting them get their feet wet, they're getting them, letting them see if it's something they want to pursue. Mm -hmm. And so that's our biggest thing, is there was a need, I thought, and I, I may have been the only one at the time because filmmaking, like I said, it never got discussed, it never got sure. talked about, people just yeah. thought, Hollywood is 3,000 miles mm -hmm. away. It's yes. not here. It's not something we deal with. So I started thinking, what can I do? What Can I do some classes or can I do some, you know, anything? And so the idea to start Southern City started to come about. And, um, you know, I knew it needed to be a nonprofit, mm -hmm. um, 501c3, which we made it. And then I knew we needed a fundraiser mm -hmm. um, because... Really, Sundance operates the exact same way. So this isn't, we're not reinventing the wheel. Sure. Um, so Sundance is really the Sundance Institute that puts on the Sundance Film Festival that raises funds to uh, make the Institute happen all year. So 
I started thinking, well, maybe we need a film festival. We don't have one. We've never had one. Um, and then I remember the Homebrew Film Festival. And so we went and, you know, the films were okay. Um, it just, there, since there's no culture of filmmaking in right. Aiken, there wasn't people right. to produce things. Yep. And so it was just sparse. And I started thinking, well, maybe if we took stuff from just all over the world. Um, and, that, and the homebrew was cool because it was just Aiken people, just people from the CSRA. And so I just started thinking, what if this was a big, a big thing? So I started to get that um, idea for a big international film festival in Aiken. And so that's when the idea came about. And so I kept thinking I'd do it in 2013. And then, you know, 2013 to 2015, I was full blast with production. Mm -hmm. I was nonstop. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have the time to do it. Um, I knew I needed a big team to help me. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing is I thought for some reason, and the dumbest thing looking back, on, I thought I could just cobble it together myself, <laughs> which was so naive and so dumb. Uh, so anyway, I just, 2015 was the year I thought it was gonna happen, mm -hmm. and I was just so over my head. So anyway, I decided to postpone it and wait till 2016. And I knew that I needed to assemble a big team. Mm -hmm. So that's when we got our board of directors together. Mm -hmm. We got our volunteer crew. And um, it's just been so awesome to have a team. And even back to the home brew, one of our categories is called the homegrown category. And that is always going to be open to CSRE residents as kind of a nod to what you did and just to give people an Aiken a chance. Because in Sundance, even if you live in Park City, you're not guaranteed by any means to get into Sundance. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how neat would it be if 10 years this thing is big, 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 and then we can always have a place for sure. the Aiken residents. Sure, yeah. I think that that's really cool, Justin. Yeah. That's that's a yeah. really neat thing. And something that, you know, Aiken is so embracing mm -hmm. of the arts. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a visual art that just hasn't been tapped into. Right. So I know that you have been well embraced mm -hmm. by the by the um, arts community, yeah, the cultural community, definitely. and have, have been very supportive yeah. of this. And it, and it seems mm -hmm. like this area is very hungry, very thirsty of yeah. wanting just another opportunity mm -hmm. for this area. So yeah. what a unique thing yeah. to have a film yeah. festival in Little yeah. Lake in South Carolina. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's kind of like, the joke with Steve Jobs was that he gave you things you didn't even know you wanted. And so that's kind of this thing is, you know, people don't know what to expect because most people haven't been to one. Right. Aiken's certainly never had one. So that's kind of the biggest challenge is people still see to me, you know, I know what a film festival is right. in and out and I just assume other people do. But so many people ask, what is a film festival? And I'm, I'm always surprised. I'm like, what, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we show movies from all over the world and we have a lot of fun and there's lots of parties and lots of filmmakers come into town and celebrities. And so, you know, once they hear that, they say, oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But before that conversation, they, they don't even know. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, we've really embraced um, through our venues. With, they're here at the AECOM Center. Um, Newberry Hall, Aiken Center for the Arts, USC Aiken. Mm -hmm. The sponsors have been amazing. Um, just, you know, they're just buying into the vision because mm -hmm. anything you do the first year is going to be most likely on the small scale. Mm -hmm. I mean, even That's right. steeplechase or lobster race. I mean, yeah. go back and look at their first year ever, and it's just, it's very different from what it is now. Right. Um, so they're really seeing the vision, what it can be. Right. Um, so, I mean, even... Even as far as film festivals, this is a small one, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's three full days, movies all day, every day, parties at night, after parties. I mean, it's it's going to be morning to night of just fun yes. all weekend. Yeah. Absolutely. What a wonderful opportunity to have this kind of exposure. Yeah. I just think it's it's wonderful. And I know that the festival itself is just one component mm -hmm. of what Southern City yeah, is. Correct. So let, let's let's talk about that um, for a few minutes. Yeah. Southern City mm -hmm. is um, the festival, the yeah. Southern City Film Festival, mm -hmm. like you were talking about in yeah. referencing kind of how, you know, it's kind of similar to Sundance. Yeah. 
and then you have the institute yeah. which is a really really awesome part yeah. of it and then you have the production part mm -hmm. so so talk about those components yeah. for just a minute so we kind of touched on the film festival mm -hmm. um, the institute is really why we exist i mean that's our mission you know you judge a nonprofit not on the income or the revenue but are they fulfilling their mission and so our mission is really to try to provide venues, avenues in the community for kids and adults too. That's the biggest thing is it's not just for kids. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, selfishly, if something started, I would want to get into it, you know? And so if it was just open for kids, I'd, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, we'll have different levels of classes. Sure. Everything will be age appropriate and um, skill level appropriate. But the Institute is where kids and adults can come and learn about filmmaking. And I say filmmaking, it's one word, but there's so many components. I mean, there's casting a movie, there's writing a movie, there's the pre-production, there's location scouting, there's learning just how to work the lights, the cameras, the sound. I mean, how to write a script. Uh, there's so many components. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's easy to say learn filmmaking, but I mean, really, there could be an eight-week-long class on lighting if we wanted to. Um, there won't be. That, that's a <laughs> bit much. But... You know, so we'll kind of take them through Filmmaking 101. And even this year alone, um, we just wrapped up uh, working with 100 kids at East Taken. We've got yes. another 100 kids throughout the community from Tall Pines, um, Aiken Middle, Mead Hall, St. Mary's, a homeschool thing. So by the time we get to this first festival in 29 days from now, mm -hmm. we will have already worked with over 200 kids. Um, so that's pretty awesome mm -hmm. because you know, that's us fulfilling our mission. And mm -hmm. out of these 200 kids, we're getting such feedback about, they love it, they can't wait to take classes, they can't wait to go into filmmaking. And that's, I mean, that's cool. That's why we, the festival will be a lot of fun, and that's what a festival should be. I mean, it'll be educational, but it'll be fun. But the Institute is really why we exist, and right. so it's just awesome um, to have these 200 plus kids get exposure to this thing that they've never gotten exposure to before. To know that you've touched, you know, those little lives yeah. in that way. And what a creative outlet. I mean, yeah. and, and, and anybody, any child can get involved yeah. because yeah. if it's, you know, you have a more uh, interest in writing, mm -hmm. well, there's that outlet. Exactly. But if you have more of an interest in wanting to yeah. have the technical, so that's yeah. one of the things that I just think is so cool is that yeah. anybody can get involved with Exactly. This. I mean, there really is a place for everybody um, if they want it. I if mean, they because, want it, that's right. You know, the acting, you know, if we're, if we're doing a scene, right, if this was a movie, you know, we would be the only actors. But there would sometimes be a crew of 50 to 100 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, there really is a place for everybody. So, it's neat. Well, yeah. and just having the appreciation of what goes on behind the scenes. I mean, that's mm -hmm. an education all yeah. in of itself. Yeah, I mean, so. people can't see this, but there's 80 people right now. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, I've there's learned. cameras, lights. I mean, so, I mean, this really is yeah. a production that it takes is. technical skills, creative skills. I mean, um, yeah. And, and the vision of the person working behind the Absolutely. camera, Mr. Mm -hmm. James Grigsby, that we always appreciate. Um, so very, very quickly, let's talk mm -hmm. about your, your short-term and long-term goals. Yeah. So the short-term goal, I mean, is really just to put on a successful first event because, you know, everyone I've talked to from the Atlanta Film Festival to Charleston, I mean, all these mentors, you know, you really need to have a good first year mm -hmm. um, to build upon. Because in terms of the film festival world, you really don't hit your stride until kind of your fifth year. Because, you know, people want to see kind of a track record of doing good. Right. I mean, that's not exclusive to film festivals. Sure. So, really, if we can put on a solid event this first year, we can build on it. And, I mean, we are well on our way. We've got Jeffrey Lyons coming, who's arguably, arguably one of the um, top film critics in the world. His son, Ben Lyons, is on entertainment tonight and all kinds of TV uh -huh. shows. Um, but Jeffrey, I mean, he's an author. He's been on so many TV shows. He's interviewed thousands of people. So he'll be here, which is important for us. I mean, that's um, to get someone of his caliber. Oh, tremendous. Um, it's really important. So um, short-term goal is to put on a great event, mm -hmm. um, raise some funds for the Institute, buy some filmmaking kits, because um, that's really how we're going to teach the kids because, you know, with a couple thousand dollars, I mean, you can buy a nice kit. Um, 
So the goal is to raise as much funds as we can mm -hmm. to fund the institute. Mm -hmm. The long-term goal is just to build on it each year because really they're good for the community. Um, people don't maybe realize this, but they bring in so much money to the community. I mean, if you look at any established film festival and the money they bring in, just as far as hotels and food and shopping and tourism, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really just, I mean, it's a win-win for, mm -hmm. for everybody, mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, an economic not, engine yeah. for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Well, um, the Southern City Film Festival, November 4th, 5th, and 6th, Give us a little taste yeah. of um, what we can expect. Yeah. Like the what kind of what are we going to see? Yeah, so we've got a, a really neat filmmakers uh, kind of roundtable at USDA can Friday morning. Okay. Um, that'll be open to the community. Jeffrey Lyons will moderate that. Um, we'll maybe show a couple shorts. Then during the day, we've got some some fun things planned. We may show a couple movies. But then Friday night, we've really got kind of our big kickoff gala. And Edwin McCain, who, you know, he's got I'll Be, and I Could Not mm -hmm. Ask For More, and mm -hmm. so many great hits. He's going to be there. Um, it's a red carpet event. I mean, food, open bar. I mean, it's really just top, top tier event. So everyone should come out to that. Um, after that, we've got an after party at the pizza joint. Um, that's just for Southern City attendees. And then Saturday, it really kicks off. We've got a children's program, so we'll probably have... 600 people plus at that because we're going to show all the movies we've been making for the kids. Um, they'll all be there. They'll get to walk the red carpet. Oh, wow. They're really excited. They'll get yeah. a certificate. And then um, right after that, around noon, and then it's movies all day at every venue. So we've got documentaries, features, shorts. Newberry Hall, we've got a neat thing called the Shorts Corner. That's where you can go in. You pay $15. Um, you can stay as long as you want shorts all day but then you get a buffet lunch included so it's really neat because for 15 bucks you get buffet lunch and then all the movies you wow. can handle um, it's friday no we cover friday saturday night we've got a big south carolina premiere of the movie happy mm -hmm. um, which sold out the imperial theater it just sold out at the milwaukee film festival i think they had to add another screening because it was so popular we'll have some of the um, filmmakers and people in that movie there We'll have a happy party after that. Um, then Sunday, uh, just like Saturday, we've got movies all day. Um, Shorts Corner will be open again. Then we've got a big closing night awards party, and um, we've got some special stuff planned for that. Uh, there might be some special guests coming in. Okay, for that so one. we're yep. going to keep that one yep, under our yep. hat. So that'll be fun. And and then before we know it, I mean Sunday night it wraps up. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's really awesome that the um, this is so affordable for anybody who wants to come. Yeah, I mean, you really do get your money's worth. I mean, we've got a 10-ticket package for $60. You can pick any 10 movies you want. Um, we've got the opening night, or you can buy a VIP pass for 125 bucks. but what that does is it gets you into all the parties. I mean, even the opening night party alone is worth mm -hmm. a lot just because mm -hmm. of how much you get. Right. The private show by Edwin, there's yeah. going to be a world-class artist there, so... Um, so even aside from the opening night party, then you've got all the movies, um, you've got all the after parties, so, um, and again, it's a fundraiser. I mean, it's really yes. all the funds. I'm not getting paid a penny. No one on the board is, so it's all going um, directly to the charity, yes. um, which will fund the filmmaking kits for the kids. And yes. It's for the kids. So. It's for the kids. That's what they kept saying all weekend. The, <laughs> they were trying to do the live auction. They said, it's for the kids. And everyone said, okay, sign me up. Sign well, up, I up. mean, the impact that you're having and what you're trying to do, your passion absolutely yeah. shows through yeah. in everything um, mm -hmm. that you're, you're doing and, and putting together. Mm -hmm. Bringing something so unique and, and what mm -hmm. a great opportunity mm -hmm. um, to our community. Yeah. And if there is one, if there, if somebody attends this mm -hmm. event, what is the one thing that you want them to take away from this experience? Just there's a lot more movies and films out there than what you see at the local Cineplex, and and I'm not knocking them because they show what makes money. You know, I mean, but there's just a difference between, you know, a big budget action movie which is fun and exciting, but then there's a lot of films out there that make you think, that inspire you, right. that, that don't get shown because they don't make a lot of money. I mean, the movie business is a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, they make, 
they put hundreds of million dollars into a movie, they want it back plus some. Right. Um, so really the biggest thing with a film festival is you show movies that don't typically get shown at a cineplex. And it doesn't mean that, I was going to say misconception, maybe it's not a misconception, but these films are not lower quality, they're not worse, it's not like they can't get into a movie theater. For instance, I think something like, I think there was 10 movies nominated for best uh, picture this year. I think only three or f maybe two or three came to Aiken. Um, so there's seven or eight movies that were nominated for best movie of the whole year that never came to Aiken. Um, so that's kind of what we're getting into is showing films from around the world and, uh, and hopefully people will enjoy them and, yes. and come back and, and spark a passion yeah. in others. Yeah. So that's, that's really, really wonderful. Yeah. Well, as, as we're wrapping up today, is there anything that, um, that we haven't talked about that, that you wanted yeah. to touch on? Yeah. Uh, biggest thing is just the, the team we have, the board of directors, the volunteers mm -hmm. and the sponsors. I mean, I can't, you know, sometimes I even hate being the spokesperson for this thing because it's so big right. that it's definitely not just me. In fact, even when it was just me, it wasn't happening, like I said. So, so even though I had an initial vision, I mean, it's still this board of directors with Betty Ryberg and Richard Herring and I mean, I could go on on Philly Sorensen and I mean, there's so many, Dr. Jordan, um, you know, I really could go on and on. There's, uh, there's 14 great people putting this thing together. Flo Holford, I mean, everybody is just breaking their backs to make this a success. And so, and even the sponsors, I mean, for them to take a chance on something that hasn't happened before, because mm -hmm. right. a lot of them said, well, how many did you get last year? And, well, we didn't have it last <laughs> year. And, how many are you expecting? Well, we're not quite sure. So, I mean, really the biggest thing is just there's so many people making this a success, a success way more so than me. Um, so. That's really the biggest thing is this team is is um, killing it and it, it would not happen. I mean, literally sure. wouldn't happen without them. I could sure. have an idea all day, uh, but without without these people and these sponsors, um, it wouldn't happen. Well, so. it sounds like you've got some great people in your corner yeah, um, working, believing in, yes. in, in, in your vision yeah. and, and what, what you're bringing. So yeah. we're very excited for November yeah. 4th, 5th and 6th. Yeah. Tickets are on sale now. They are. You can go to southerncity.org or scff.eventbrite.com. It'll take you to the same place. Just check out southerncity.org and, and you'll find everything you need. Very good. Yeah. And we hope that all of you will um, if not attend the entirety of the film festival, that you'll pick a day, mm -hmm. uh, come out and enjoy just a lot of fun. Uh, check out southerncity.org. Uh, for more information. And Justin, thank you so much thank you. for taking a few minutes out of your schedule thank today you. to talk to us. Thanks for having me. It's been great. All right. <laughs> and we thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time for Aiken This Week.